You alone exist as pure undivided consciousness. The world is not real because there is nothing outside of your consciousness, which means the elements are only consciousness. The world is falsely believed to be real because the all-pervading self thinks it only exists behind your eyes in the form of an individual mind. That's why, when it's discovered through self-inquiry that the mind doesn't exist, pure consciousness is then revealed. It's as if a movie projector falsely believes itself to be a character in the movie it projects. And as a result, the movie world is believed to be real by the projector. I've been comparatively studying Ramana Maharshi and Adi Shankara quite a bit lately, and I feel that this paragraph, along with the analogy that accompanies it, sums up the message that I've gleaned from my studies that I want to share with you. In the following talk, I'll explain in my own words this summary of my dear Guru's teachings. In the realm of Eastern wisdom, there are two common and similar statements given with regard to the nature of reality. They are, the world is mind and the universe is only consciousness. These two statements mean slightly different things. First of all, it's important to understand what the sage means when he uses the term world. In Shankara, when he says the world is unreal, the term world is being defined here as there being an area of reality that exists outside of the individual's mind, of which that individuality is later stated to be only a delusion. But in this first statement, the world is mind, the term world is best defined by the opening verse in the Tao Te Ching, where Lao Tzu says, naming the mother of 10,000 things. So world is being defined as a collection of separate things and events with names and titles. And the statement, the world is mind, is saying that this world of things are only so because the mind has named them, identified them. A thing is a think. These words are similar in our language because philosophically they're the same thing. And as Alan Watts says, when you stop talking and naming, there are no things and all is quite obviously one. So it is only the mind that gives rise to the myriad of objects. Oneness here means more of the original Chinese perspective on life, that all life is one organism. This is a little bit different from the Hindu perspective that reality is only consciousness because being one single interrelated organism doesn't imply or explain how all is consciousness or how matter appears in reality as water appears in a mirage. So let me explain further here what the second of those two statements, the universe is only consciousness, is so we can further understand the difference between the two statements. As I stated in the title, if there is no mind, this implies that there is only mind. What do I mean by this? Remember, Shankara is defining the term world as there being an area of your experience of reality that exists outside of or separate from you. And he says that this is unreal and proceeds to point out that the reason why is because individualized existence is only an illusion, which has diluted the indivisible self. And since you have to have an inside for there to be an outside, if the inside, the person, is unreal, then so is the outside. So basically what he's saying is, if there's no individual center of you, then there is nothing outside of you. And if there is nothing outside of you, then there is only you. And if there is only you, then there is only consciousness. Because you define yourself as being an individual light, an individual center of awareness, also called mind. 
in the singular, my mind. So if that individual center of awareness, that individual mind, is not there, as Ramana Maharshi points out, if that light is centerless, then there is only that light, and matter and space are not real. Simply put, if there is no individual mind, there is only mind. Conversely, if the delusion of individual mind, consciousness, is there, then the delusion that the universe is something other than consciousness, namely matter, time, and space, is there. And the way in which Shankara describes this illusion of reality is by saying that the self, Brahman, appears to share the nature of the world. This is a key thing to remember in comprehension of Shankara. The statement that the world appears to be real means the same thing as the statement that Brahman, the self, appears to share the nature of the world. When we say something appears to share the nature of something, it's a way of saying that thing projects an illusion. So, out of the void of pure being, the goddess, the inherent power of that pure being to project herself as the illusion of time, matter, and space, uses her power to do just that. And she is then deluded, that is, convinced that her own illusion of time and space is real, by the primary delusion that she is an individual soul or mind. Here there is another very important point to make. She, the goddess, spiritual consciousness, is deluded, not you. Remember, you are just a thought, an object of consciousness, a phenomena that is seen, inert. A thought can't be deluded. A thought can only present an illusion to which the witness, the spiritual self, can then be deluded. This is why you can't just ride the train of intellect to enlightenment. You must surrender to God because she is the one who has deluded herself and that means it's her work. When you pray to the goddess, don't pray for her to reveal your true self to you. Pray for her to reveal her true self to her. This is the theme of the chorus to the Vishvampari Stuti, a beautiful hymn to the Divine Mother, written in the Gujarati language by an unknown poet. He or she says, Surrender, O Mother, in the form of Om. Destroy all the pains that exist. So the Divine Mother who is manifesting this illusion of division from her own indivisible self is currently in the form of what's called veiling and projecting, veiling the reality of being one without a second by projecting an illusion of being divided. So she's in the form of illusion and is being prayed to by one of her devotees suffering from delusion that she surrender in the form of Om, not himself, praying that she surrenders in the form of Om. Om is the heart of creation. Everything exists within this original vibration of the universe in the same way that all the action taking place on the movie screen exists in the light of the movie projector. So he or she is praying to the Divine Mother that she unveil her true nature to herself by surrendering to her undiluted form, the form of Om, from her deluded state of veiling and projecting this illusion of time, matter, and space, which thus would liberate the devotee from his suffering at the hands of delusion because that devotee is her. So give yourself to her. Bring your heart to the state where it only chants her name, the way she is chanting Lord Ram's name, and be received by her love which is the union of her to her own truth, Sat Chit Ananda. <laughs>